the word monk is applied. You pack a monk? No, what I, does that mean? I, I call myself a monk. Oh. Yeah, because uh, basically I live alone by myself with the meals, and I travel, I walk, and I contemplate. I don't read books. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't have a radio. I don't listen to the radio. I do have a cell phone, which is necessary to work the, pay, the Facebook page. So I see myself as a monk. I live in that type of So it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. That's fine. You can call yourself whatever you want. Um, how were you greeted at the John Muir house? Uh, well, uh, we weren't greeted badly. Uh, I went there, and uh, my uh, idea was to uh, request, and I did request, uh, that we could stop there for the night and go to sleep. Now, of course, we, that was refused. Can't do that. And uh, we asked the reasons why, and uh, basically we were told by the head guy there that he has regulations he has to obey. He has no discretion. He had no discretion to say, well, you go over there in the corner for the night, you leave in the morning, which was our intention. But uh, the way it's all set up, uh, you know, he wasn't able to do that. You have a vision of a national pathway system, right? Yes. How, what is that? Well, it's just uh, exactly that, pathways uh, for bicycles, pedestrians, hikers, and equestrians. No motor vehicles and uh, uh, vision. It needs to be extensive, and it needs to be done with the same effort that they uh, built the freeway system with. The taxpayer money, well-funded, and it con uh, considered as in necessary infrastructure uh, for humanity. Uh, not for business, moving goods as fast as possible uh, on pavement, but an infrastructure for the survival of humanity, of us as human beings. Uh, we have to have it for our health, mental and physical, we just have to have it. It's obvious when you're out here walking like we do, and you're forced on these uh, dangerous roads, uh, which have no shoulders, many of them. Uh, motorists are going at a speed limit of 55 miles an hour. Uh, who knows what they're doing, texting, what they're on. Uh, it's suicide. They've driven the equestrian off the, their legal right to be on the public thoroughfare. They've driven people off because it's so dangerous. Equestrians specifically, horse people. Well, yes. Uh, or mule people, too. Yeah, equestrians. Yeah. yeah. An automobile going by you two or three feet away at 55 miles an hour is unnerving. But average people don't want to deal with that, so they don't. And they stay in their cars and they load their horses up in horse trailers and go from one little designated spot to the next. There's no freedom of movement in this country left. Uh, it's all been given over to the machines. They're taking over our lives and they're destroying, they're destroying our ability to be human beings. What you're talking about is an extensive, nationwide, all connected, all of those things connected, city not just little city. dots of them. City to city, Sacramento to, uh, uh, Sacramento to San Diego, San Diego to San Francisco, you know, where people can walk and uh, they can sleep at night. Uh, they can stop along the uh, pathway and spend the night, cook their meal. Uh, yep. So not turned away. You got a name for that other than the National Pathway System? Have you thought about that? No, I haven't come up with any uh, particular name. We just talk about pathways, trails for the uh, various venues. And uh, yeah, and to, uh, what's being done uh, in this state and in the country is illegal. Uh, these roads, uh, we all have a right to use them. There's no question about it. They're public thoroughfares. Uh, but we're being denied the right to use them by an automobile, uh, by the roads that are designed to accept only uh, a fast-moving, heavy machine, and anybody get in its way be damned. And uh, that's illegal. The state is up for a good lawsuit. And, and even in the time that you've been doing it, you've noticed changes in terms of even more restriction of movement? Yeah. Uh, back in 86, I bought, uh, I had two mules in 86, and uh, we left uh, Fresno, and we went up uh, to, Yos we got up on the Pacific Crest Trail, and then we went north to Yosemite, and we entered uh, Yosemite, I had two mules, 
we had the free room anywhere in San we could go. Any trail, uh, we could graze anywhere. In the National Park? National, Yosemite National Park. No restrictions whatsoever. We could camp in there for as long as we wanted. Uh, that you cannot do anymore. No, no way. But uh, up in the Highland Sierra now, no pack mules. In the Yosemite in National the, Park. In the National Parks. Well, you're allowed, but you're, you're very restricted. Ah. What trails you can ride on, where you can stop, and you can't graze anymore at all. You have to pack in feed, you have to pack in pellets or whatever. We grazed. We just grazed on the meadows and stuff. You can't do that anymore. Are you retired, or uh, do you still consider yourself a working man? Uh, well, I'm not working... I'm not working in a traditional sense anymore as, ha as having a job, traditional type job, but uh, uh, living with this mule and packing her up every morning and walking all day is a job. It's a very enjoyable one. And so I've retired myself into that. When you were trimming, trimming trees, were you thinking about mules? Um, no. No, when I first started, I trimmed trees for 30 years. I started when I was in my 20s. I wasn't thinking about mules at all. Uh, when I got into, well, I got in my late 20s, I started doing a lot of backpacking in the summers. And uh, I'd go up into the various wildernesses and come across pack trains every so often. Uh, and but you had a pack on your back only. Uh, yeah, I, had, I was packing weight. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here comes a pack train and I get up, get out of the way so it can go by. And it was always very enjoyable, and uh, these meals uh, caught my interest going by. And so one day a little light went on and said, uh, why don't you get a mule? Uh, it would be so much easier, you wouldn't have to pack all this weight. You could stay out longer, you'd have some company. And so uh, that, kind of, that idea stuck with me and grew. And uh, years later, I eventually uh, bought my first mule when I was 36. So, and that was how long ago then you've been doing this in the mule Well, well, 36, packing. it's been 33 years. And you were doing that part-time, right? right? Right, When I started, I was still working, trimming trees, so uh, I'd uh, take the mules into the forests and wander around from state to state during the summers. And when it started to get cold, usually in September, I'd find a place to leave them on a ranch or somewhere a pasture him for the winter, and then I go back to California and work. And I, I did that until I was about 54, and then I said, uh, I saved a little money, and I said, well, I could get cancer tomorrow. You know, I don't have a wife, I don't have any kids, I got the freedom to do what I want to do that way, and so I just decided to go start living with the meals all the time and quit working. Hmm? Freedom is the big deal for you. Yes, it's... Uh, the big deal is being out in nature, being able to be not connected to the man-made world, houses, cars, roads, in that way. Uh, I'm connected to them, and uh, I'm much closer to the natural world than most people, and that's what I like, that's what I enjoy. Well, and it's like freedom of movement back in the days of the Texas Trail, the Chisholm Trail, something like that, right? Well, to a degree. It's 2017, so... There's fences everywhere. Uh, we're stuck on uh, moving uh, on roads. Uh, when we get to a wilderness area or national forest, we acquire a little more freedom of movement. Well, a lot more. But they're all fenced. BLM land and uh, uh, national forest is all section fenced. And uh, you're constantly jumping fences and finding your way around through the mandate stuff. It's not like it used to be back in 100 years ago. And Little girl's 27. She's 27. Yeah. 27, which is... Cut it out. You, you feel, though, she's pretty frisky and young still? Yes, yeah, she's doing fine. Yeah. And, and she's the only remaining one. You had two others. Yeah. Uh, my oldest one, she's 38, and uh, I retired her oh, last she, year. Oh, she's just off, off traveling. But yeah. she's, Where do they stay when they're home? Uh, people will uh, volunteer to take care of them. You know, people that really love animals, and uh, we left her with a lady, and she's she posts on the Facebook page pictures of her and what, how she's doing, and uh, she's having a good life. So most people keep track of you through social media and your map and and all that, yeah. and so, and because you need oats, you need water. No, we don't yeah. need oats. Uh, ah, she, so grazing is fine. Grazing, just what we come across. 
and water is, uh, you know, if we're out in the bush or the hills or whatever, creeks is a source of water. And uh, when we're in the cities, which we are a lot of the time now, uh, every, well, not every building, but most buildings have hydrants on them and uh, businesses. And then uh, homeowners who just walk into a neighborhood, knock on the door and ask if I can get some water for the mules. So it's easy in an urban area. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, you, you don't go out into the wild unless you know where the water is. Or well, you've got it. We go out in the wild. That's what's great about packing and the mules. They, uh, if they get water once a day in 100 plus degree heat with 200 pounds on their back, they're fine. Huh. They're fine. And uh, so that gives, they have great versatility and movement anywhere. And so uh, we've never been, uh, I've traveled all over the western United States in the hottest, driest parts. And uh, we've never been up against it for water. Never. Um, you were saying something a little while ago about sleeping, though, that especially that bag that you just can't sleep anywhere. What? You know, uh, we have a constitutional right in this country uh, to go anywhere we want, to travel freely. That's what freedom's all about, and we have that right in this country. It's a constitutional right. And the mules, this place of one human being traveling with his or her animal companion, uh, we exercise that right every day, one step at a time. Uh, but, however, that being said, uh, the right to sleep, after walking all day, you have to go to sleep. If you don't go to sleep, you don't get sleep, you die. And that right to go to sleep is being denied to anybody uh, like the mules, living like us, a somatic way of life, living outside all day, every day. Uh, the right to go to sleep at night is being denied by the use of the no camping laws, which are in every county in this state. And they forbid you from going to sleep. And if you're caught by an officer on the ground uh, at night sleeping, you're subject uh, to a heavy fine arrest, uh, cited, you have to appear in criminal court before a judge, uh, you can be put in jail and heavily fined. And uh, that law, uh, we don't obey that law because we can't obey that law. Uh, as I said, if you don't sleep, you die. And so how can anybody living like we live uh, obey that law? Uh, we're a nomadic people. Our ancestors have been here for hundreds of thousands of years, and we still practice that way of life. And uh, we're not going to give it up. And uh, anybody that says we can't sleep is telling us we have to kill ourselves. And that's what these laws are doing. They're killing us, and we can't not obey them.